Are you like me, a bit of a car enthusiast, a bit of a petrol head, but maybe you haven't gone over to the dark side of EVs yet. Maybe you've had your turn of fairly speedy cars, Audi RS3s or Golf Rs or M3s, something like that, but you're increasingly intrigued about considering an electric car. Maybe you're very excited about an electric car, but you're not sure what it's like to live with or do long journeys. You hear the stories in the papers and, you know, electric costs are high and you can't do long trips and it takes hours to charge and all that kind of stuff. Well, I hope you can stick with me in this video because I'm going to take this Tesla Model 3 Performance and do a longer journey and I'll show you some of uh, my experience with that and just how easy it is to live with and how much it does cost to run and all that kind of stuff. But these cars are just, I think, absolute bargains now. They're under £35,000, so now they've come down in price a little bit. You may have this temptation to go over. They cost far less to run, certainly far less in servicing. And if you're running one through a business or company car scheme, you can save an absolute fortune. So if you're tempted by the new cheaper Tesla Model 3 performances on the used market out there, an example just like this one here, under £35,000 now for a nice one like this, still in all Tesla warranty and everything as well, then stick with me on this video. I'm going to show you a, a trip I've just done across the length of the country in this. We're just one stop and it's just very easy. It really is. So mine is Richard, this is RSCV, and this is a Tesla Model 3 Performance. journey in one of these cars so I'm just outside Newcastle Airport now and I'm going to get back to the south coast for dinner hopefully it's 12 minutes past 10 now and I'll simply put navigate to oh, Simon's LTD there we are Hampshire New Milton right on the south coast down here so this is pretty much the entire length of England not much further we can go in England so and I'm going to leave on 62% battery. And of course, when you leave home, for example, do a long trip, you'd normally leave a fully charged battery. So I put it in. It's going to show me a couple of charging stops, which is probably when I'm going to need a loo break anyway. And then I'll see how I go. Might not use these charging stops. Might use some others. There's plenty to choose from on the route. So if I hit this little button here, it will show me all available chargers. But the car plans out a route for me. So let's stick with that for now and then see how we get on. All right, 13 minutes past 10. Let's see how we go. Let's start the car. I haven't paired my phone as a key. Let me do that. Let me pair my phone as a key. Key card there, connected. All right, so now I don't need that little key card anymore. I'll just leave it in my wallet, for example, here. And my phone becomes the key. Foot on the brake, starts the car, and off we go. All right, 14 minutes past 10, Newcastle to New Milton. And we're just in a little lay-by, so pulling it out into a dual carriageway. Of course, these things are quick, so off we go. Oy. That is 0 to 60, 70, straight up to speed. So if you are coming from a fast car, don't worry, plenty of performance in one of these. <laughs> Always makes you smile. Okay, let's get into the journey and uh, we'll see how we go for traveling time, efficiency, charging stops. Do I have to stop for ages? Is it an inconvenience? Well, I've done a lot of miles up and down the country in electric cars over the years and i think it's very very easy so hopefully this video will show you that so as i settle into a cruise currently in a 50 miles per hour speed limit zone let me just tell you a bit about this car so this is a 2019 tesla model 3 performance has 32,000 miles on it a couple hundred more by the time i get back and it has about 75 kilowatt hour battery dual motors it's four wheel drive independent motors and these are good for 0 to 60 in just over three seconds. They are fast cars. I've done many a test drive with people who come from fast cars and they're always surprised just how quick they are. So if you're, if you're skeptical, I think we've seen enough videos now. And of course, we've done a lot of videos with car wow and various drag races. These are quick cars. And like I say, test drivers, people that have had very fast cars and even people with Ferraris have said, wow, this is just something else. And on the road, they probably are one of the fastest point-to-point -point cars you can get the instant follow response the sheer grip the acceleration 
it, it's astonishing. The weight's all low down under the floor, so again, corner and grip is high. You, the performance models have track mode. You can take them on track. You can set it to be rear-wheel drive, traction control off, front-wheel drive if you want. They've got drift mode. You can customise all your settings for track. They can automatically time your laps. And yet, you can then take your kids to school, go shopping. They're a saloon rather than a hatchback, but they've got a large boot. I've done many a family holiday in a Model 3 and always been absolutely fine for space. Great for distance and touring as well. Just the ease of kind of the visibility on the map in here. I mean, it's really good when you explore new areas as well. It's one of those things you kind of get to appreciate more when you live with one of these. So the software on here really is yeah, ahead of anything else. You might have one screen, you might think you're going to miss the speed in the middle, but I don't think it will. You do get used to it almost instantly, super easy to use. And of course, it's constantly updating with new features and functions. So even a Tesla that's two, three, four years old or older is running the latest software with the latest features. And it just installs it over the air. It sort of takes 20 minutes overnight one night, two o'clock in the morning, up do your software update, just like your phone or an iPad. And then you get all these new features. It doesn't have to go to a dealer for software updates. In fact, you very rarely have to see a dealer at all, if at all, because there's not even a service routine on a Tesla. That's a strange concept for a lot of people, but yes, no service routine. There is no year 12,000 miles or anything like that. What is there to service? You've got to change an old tire, maybe a wiper blade, but that's really about it. There isn't really anything to do, and if you want to change a pollen filter, Tesla will sell you a pollen filter and tell you how to do it. It's very simple. You do not have those potentially scary servicing costs and no water pumps, no exhaust, no clutches. And even the brakes, again, you run an expensive performance car, BMW M3s or Audi RS4s, you've got expensive brake discs and pads to take care of sometimes. And this, you won't even get through your brake pads because it uses the motors to slow the car down. You very actually rarely use the friction brakes on the car at all. I've had many of these, some with very high mileage, and they've been fine. I've never had to change a brake disc or pad ever on a Model 3. I've barely had to do anything on a Model 3 ever since they came out. And I picked up one on the first day they came out in June 2019. I was one of the very first Model 3 reformers owners in the UK. And there's been so little issues with them over the years. It's like even now they're getting up to, um, you know, three, four years old with some mileage, and they're still fine. They're still good. Uh, the only thing we had on some of the early ones, you get a bit of moisture in the back lights, but they've kind of been changed now. Um, there's been so little issues and so little maintenance, so little to go wrong in these cars. Tesla really nailed it. Their manufacturing was simplified loads. And so these, to a majority degree, are very much maintenance free, cost almost nothing to run. And if you're going to get a company car or you run a business there's so many savings to be had there as well so not just the fuel cost savings or your annual road tax or your London congestion zone and not just your maintenance savings but company car tax savings you could save 200 300 pounds a month running one of these compared to picking a Mondeo diesel a BMW 320d if you run a business you can buy one uh, through the business as well and there's some savings to be had there which are significant this is me pulling to Ferry Bridge Services now. So it's just very nearly midday. So I've been driving the best part of a couple of hours. So I'm ready for a stop. It's midday, so I'm hungry as well. And um, I've never been here actually for charging. It's one of the few places I haven't. So the key is always, I mean, it's always marked exactly on the map. So just follow where the pin is on the map. There's some other car chargers over there, but the Tesla chargers I can see now are over there. And looks like they're even building more of them. That's good. I can cut through here actually. And it shows me just now on the map that there's five available, so it's good that you can see that that's one of the things with Tesla. There's usually tons of available chargers. Someone's just maneuvering there, so I'll let them adjust themselves. Let's plug it into charger so you how easy that is. So you can open a charge port from here, you can put it over there, you can say open butthole. And there's also a button on the charger, so quite simple. This is a Tesla charger, there's a whole bank of them here. Take this out of the nozzle, plug it in like that, and that's it. You hear the click, and then you usually look for this just to turn green before you walk away, just so you know it's actually charging. There it is, it's charging. And we can see here as well, so we're at 11% now, 11.57. So 
What I'm going to do is simply go to the services over there, have some food, have some drink, go to the toilet and all that kind of stuff. And then we'll see where the car is at then. So midday, just started charging. It's now 12.34, so I've been just over half an hour, say 35, 36 minutes for another healthy lunch at a UK motorway services. Uh, and I'm now at 91%, it tells me here, I've got enough charge to continue your trip. It sends you messages on the app as well. So when you're in the services, you can see what your charge is. It tells you that you're ready to go. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'll take my coat off, unplug and go. So just as I'm about to unplug actually, what I've done is just look at my route and it's suggesting a charge stop at Oxford. But I've just removed charging stop and it says I can go straight back to work with 3% left, so that's 245 miles. So what I'm actually gonna do is just wait another minute or so. And I've just got to quickly answer a message on my phone anyway. And uh, so I get to about 5% spare. And that might mean I just go back in one go without charging that way. It's good to have a little bit of buffer. Um, and there's loads of charge if I need to stop. And I probably need to stop for the toilet after this anyway. But again, I might just be able to do it in one go if I feel like I can. So. We'll see how we go. Right, that's a quick message and we're off. Right, let's unplug it. I'm gonna get back with 5% in theory. Let's see how we go. 94% <laughs> battery. That'd be. What we could actually do is just have a look and see how much that costs. It costs 24 pounds 76 for that. Obviously the public chargers, superchargers are more expensive than other chargers, uh, like at home, <laughs> which is where you'd normally charge. In my case, with our fantastic solar, we can now actually charge at work, off the sun, for free. So, yes, some of the charges are a bit more expensive and I'm sure there's people out there now already going, well, my Passat diesel can do that for 15 pounds. I wouldn't normally daily use superchargers, only on these longer trips. So if you think about most of the time you could fuel your car from home for half the price that you pay now, or even free, that's kind of the comparable situation, so. So it says here charging needed to reach destination. We'll see how we go. We might need to. And the reality is I probably need to stop anyway. But that's fine. There's loads of chargers on the route. So I'm just gonna see how we get on. Tesla software, as I always say, really is very, very good. And one thing it doesn't have, though, is Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, um, which most people in a modern car will be used to by now. Uh, so, okay, it doesn't have that, but I do agree with the notion you don't really need it. The mapping and, and everything here is, is Google Maps. So it's very, very good, so easy to use. Apple Music and Spotify, for example. So that's integrated within this really well. You just don't really need uh, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, I don't think. You can play podcasts as well. Uh, literally with the voice recognition as well, you can play, play Lana Del Rey. And off it goes and plays Lana Del Rey. Can't play it, can't play it, copyright. <laughs> uh, but. You can see how it's just so good, so nice and easy to use. Um, you can browse around on Spotify here, but you can just push the button, say what you want on. It just works. It's very, very good. So I, I tend, I don't, I, I drive cars with Apple CarPlay as well, uh, but I don't miss it in a Tesla. Uh, really, it's fine without it, to be honest. Back of the office. All right, let's get some figures. 5.30, 5.29, so 2% battery left. Battery power low, plug it in. Okay, so I did that in one go. Four hours, 51 minutes of continuous driving. So when people say, I can't have an electric car because it doesn't go very far, I have to keep stopping. How many of those people actually drive for more than five hours in one stint? I think I'm pretty well trained. I do a lot of long distance driving, so I think I'm pretty up there with the very few that can do it, surely. 
but still apparently electric cars for many people's minds don't go far enough so hopefully stuff like this just shows that they really do now that covered 249 miles since i charged and i've averaged 247 watt hours per mile so that's just just slightly better than four miles per kilowatt hour um, so my entire day, 354 miles, 269 hours a mile since this car had 60, whatever it was, 2%. Um, what's quite good with Tesla's now is they've got this um, uh, chart here. So that actual last trip there, 250 miles, consumed 92.2% of the battery. It's just one of those typical afternoon journeys in the UK on a Thursday, luckily not a Friday, where... It's just quite busy so there's quite a lot of traffic jams quite a bit we're just doing 60 miles an hour a lot of road works at 50 miles an hour and literally the slower you go the further it goes so it was a pretty efficient run i will accept that uh, but it goes to show i mean that's just uk traffic that was it you know i got back as quick as i could i could have been in a ferrari and it'll still be arriving at 529 so that means this car 100 percent to zero 270 miles of range okay um and then let's say there is a little bit of buffer i did do a video in fact last thursday i drove with the 2022 model 3 performance which is like i said a bit more efficient it has different battery as well and it does have a little bit more range um probably slightly less efficient driving today was pretty warm as well it got up to 20 degrees celsius which again helps with efficiency um, but if you want to see how the latest 2022 2023 model 3 performance compares there is another video i did a trip on last week uh, which should be in one of our recent videos and if i remember i'll put a link in the description below um, I, hope, I hope it's been useful again sort of an off the cuff uh, video just as, as i go one of our journeys but hopefully just another example of a real world scenario real world trip um it's all easy enough isn't it so especially if you are thinking of going from you know something else and uh, this will be your first electric car you like a bit of a turn of speed you might do your track down you're thinking about model 3 performance i hope this has been a real good like, scenario example that you can drive from i remember those services are up sort of leeds direction to right the south coast where we are here you can do that nice and easily uh, see look we're right on the south coast now that's a proof of point and we drove from um up here where those last services and i drove from newcastle today and this car actually left this morning with 84 percent up in uh right on the borders actually in, in um berwick upon tweed so yeah there we go right my phone's going i better go thanks for watching see you on the next one uh, one thing i was gonna mention was cost wasn't it so i mean with that when we had that uh, charge stop uh, which cost uh, 25 pounds there at Fairbridge. you can see look i haven't charged anywhere else since last charging station ferry bridge 25 pounds um, and of course there's a recharge cost now so um, 67 kilowatt hours we started with that 62 percent so times 0.62 so 41 and a half kilowatt hours to bit it back to where it was um, now for me that would be nothing because we use the solar uh let's say you pay the highest domestic rate of electricity at the moment uh it would also cost you it would cost you 14 pounds to put it back so you've got 14 pounds plus the 25 pounds 40 pounds to do that journey of uh, 354 miles so uh, i don't think that's too bad at all and again most of the time you wouldn't really need to charge out in the public anyway you normally use a cheap one um, and just to give you an idea no percent of battery um, up to what we calculate as maximum use about 69 kilowatt hours if you had like a cheap overnight tower say seven eight pence per kilowatt hour let's say eight pence per kilowatt hour and that you're generally running this car on then that'd be five pound 52 so and you can see from that you can do about 270 miles on that um, okay so that's that's about that actually i just as i was parking the car to put it on charge i just thought of that so i think i'll call it quits there <laughs> thanks for watching see you in the next one